done that to you? Dee Dee and Jeremy. Jeremy. <laughs> no, we, we were introduced we did as, Jeremy as, as, Dee Gardner. as, as, as like, husband oh, and Mary. wife That's awesome. <laughs> the other night. So, Well, I just benefited you, so there you go. Um, I just wanted to talk about the challenge of bringing this story to screen. And, and something that struck me, which I found incredibly courageous, was your decision to tell this story um, straight, kind of warts and all. And I just feel like sometimes there's a tendency to take iconic figures or stories and deal with them cinematically without the nuance that sometimes takes the edge off of our icons, right? To realize that they're uh, fully formed human beings, flaws and all. And I'm just wondering for you, I think I probably know the answer to this, but talk about it. Was there ever a question that you wouldn't take this story head on um, and risk the wrath of some who may not like to see their icons up close and personal in the same way? Uh, n no, but I, I, th that might be really naive. And I didn't expect any wrath. <laughs> I, I, I think we thought the best thing we can do is um, show Dr. King the man, not Dr. King the myth. Like, if you do that, then what he accomplished, which is so remarkable, over a very short period of time at an incredibly young age, then becomes possible for every, for all of us. So, you know, alongside enthusiasm and ferocity and um, oratory brilliance, show um, fret and worry and fear and uh, regret. Like, show a, a human being that a person sitting in a seat can identify with, and then, I don't know, all doors are open, in a way. Yeah, I, mean, I think that was the basic form, but I think we have to credit um, Ava. That was Ava, man. She's and, like, and his amazing a, cast. He's a guy. He's, he's, he's a father. He's a son. He's a, you know, he's a husband. He's, he's got all this stuff. And Ava's talked about reclaiming Dr. King from the iconography of four words. She said something the other day, and uh, I, we were all talking uh, about the film, and you know, the idea of like, you know, what if your life was reduced to four words? Like, that would be very frustrating. She you said, know? I have a dream. That's what everyone says about him. Sure. I have a dream. What if your life was reduced to four words? No one wants that. I mean, it's very acute right now, right, in, in this town at least and, and around the world that, you know, backlashes are possible and they go to high extremes, but I just think in this case I want to applaud all of your courage to take on these figures and actually make them human um, in, a, in a narrative. I mean, this is still a film. So maybe you two could talk just a little bit about how you um, thought about or, or made peace with the idea that you were going to create characters out of these individuals who so many people in the world had ideas about and, and there was an actual history with. Um, yeah, I guess I feel the same way about Dee Dee. That, they would, that it really wouldn't have um, been something that I think David or I were interested in if it was going to be really living up to mythology and sort of the, the stone monument that we all think of. The thing that's intriguing though about Coretta is that in some ways she had bought into her own iconography by the time we play her. So I had a slightly different challenge than perhaps some of the rest in that I felt that I had to buy into some of the mythology for, and the veneer because that's something that she bought into, I think, by 1965. Um, but then there's this great scene in the middle of the film that Ava had written where there is a crack in the veneer and you get to see a a, a, a real complex emotional expression by this woman where um, which really allowed me before that scene and after that scene to to sort of honor the facade that she had created for herself in many ways knowing that there would be that moment in the middle to um, to really delve into what what I think you guys are describing um, I find her far more remarkable as a person when you understand that she had the same foibles and stresses and frustrations as any other mum, wife um, out there and was still able to uh, remain somehow this, uh, this leader of a movement and the, the sort of the face 
the uh, the face in, at the fore. So um, yeah, I think for both David and I, it, always the intention was to get past the myth, past the iconography. But I had to play into it to some degree because that's very much what she was doing. So this is actually the second time you've played Coretta Scott King, is that right? Yeah. yeah. And you got yeah. to meet her the first time around, is that right? Yeah, so I played her um, in a production called Boycott for HBO. And, um, oh, thanks, <laughs> that one person that saw it, thank you so much. We saw <laughs> Two it. people. <laughs> we saw it. Um, and that, that was a different time in her life and, and Martin's where they had just been thrust into the position of leadership much more naive about where things were going, um, a lot more hope in terms of uh, what was possible, the threat of death, although it was, it was already something that they were dealing with, it wasn't quite the daily, the daily um, burden that I think it had become by 1965. So it's a very different woman that I was portraying in that, in that production than I got to portray in this one. So, but you actually got some of her input. Did you have a chance of... Forgive my ignorance, I'm not sure if he's still with us or if you got a chance to meet him. No, James Bevel, he died in 2008. And that's the character, that's the person that, that I was portraying in the film. And for me, it was, it was like I wanted to honor and pay respect to, to James Bevel and really everybody that was a part of that movement. I felt like we had that responsibility to be as truthful and pay as much respect to each individual and Ava made sure as Dee Dee said it was really like Ava made sure that the that we got to see Dr. King as a human being that we get to see Coretta Scott King as a human being I mean it was some it was certain scenes that we may not have used but you it was times where you would see our characters kind of like arguing and not agreeing on certain situations I mean members of the SCLC because it happened when we watch we will see footage of them and they would you know you see them sitting around going back and forth you know and they this is a team that works together but this is how they will come with their ideas and that's part of just being a team is you know sometimes you're not going to agree sometimes it's going to be real big disagreements but at the same token you also will see them joking sitting around eating a little chicken having fun and, you know but um and that's the human things that made us realize that that we can be the Dr. Kings and the, and the James Bevels and Diane Nash's. I mean, meaning us as everyday people. Like, those are the things that, that made me say, man, I could go out and really achieve some things in this world and help to change the world. Like, because I seen that these, these guys and, and women were just like us. You know, they were cool people, real people that, you know, had their flaws and, and, and it was strong to be able to play those characters. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that Ava's not quite here yet and talk about team uh, team building and, and teamwork on this project. So this is Ava's second feature film, um, obviously. No, third? Uh, Sorry, actually, third. Uh, she did a documentary, This is the Life, about hip hop in Los Angeles and then right. I Will Follow in the Middle of Nowhere. So Got it. So fourth, fourth feature length film. You know? Yeah. But of a different scale certainly than her previous work, and um, very loaded subject matter. So it must have been an intense thing um, for you guys. I know that this film has had a, a long history in development, or a relatively long history in development. Yeah. What, talk about bringing Ava on and, and what that brought to the, to the film. I, th I think there's this perception that, you know, like, and I understand this, and I, I don't mean to, like, you know, make, fun of it or something but you know like you know jumping in budget jumping in scale and um you know on paper in the abstract <laughs> that must seem like oh, oh, oh my god that's so perilous but inside of our experience there that wasn't how we regarded Ava's sort of I guess um moving to become the the perfect director um I think that she brought certain um both very specific um Sort of thematic and and uh, and creative ideas to it, but also there was a there's a confidence and a and a self assuredness that that didn't I think make us feel as if we were, you know, in that situation um, where that the kind of cliff dive of that. Having said that, it was a 33 day shoot um, on a tight budget, and we wrapped the film on the 3rd of July of this year. Um, 
So, uh, anyway. But, can I say something about her leadership? Yeah. Because, excuse me, it's, you know, it's a blessing to be able to work with a leader who really is compassionate. And first of all, like, what I'm noticing is I get to experience working with different directors that part of it is their talent and some of it is just their taste. And then some of it is their leadership and her leadership when she was high in all those categories, her talent and gifts and vision is there. Her taste was impeccable. And I always look at movies and when I see every, like, if I see all the background actors doing well and all the actors doing well, I'd be like, man, that director is incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, the, I mean, it's just the truth. That's how I feel. It's like, and I believe Ava was able to bring out the best in everyone and everyone on that set felt a part of it. And they knew that the, what the stakes were as far as we were doing important work, not just important work just in Hollywood, but important work telling stories that really meant something to American history and towards the present day. Even, even though it wasn't the situations of, we didn't know that the Mike Brown situation would happen or, or the Eric Garner situation, but we still felt that this was some important story that was relevant to, to today. And she, she made the crew, she made the cast members, she made the, the catering people feel like, hey, we all a part of this. And, and it just, and it translates. When you see, like when I look at the film, it's like, I see background actors really just doing well and they into it. And I've seen the difference, you know, so I just want to commend her on like her vision and her gifts and her taste and her leadership. But come on, no fights? None of those fights you were talking about well, happened? <laughs> well, I mean, she was able to, if those fights were there, she was able to like, not allow that to to seek to get to us to get to you know us as we were filming so if it was i mean it's always probably going to be some disagreements i, I can actually remember it was a time where <laughs> we were filming a scene the scene the scene at the courthouse where jim clark and and and, he, and all the people all the people stooped down and, and the SELC is standing anywhere somewhere down the street a guy